to our internet guests again. We are uh, thrilled to have you join us each time. And we want to continue to remind you, if you haven't already, go down and subscribe to this cast so that when we come up, you'll be notified. That way you won't miss us. And also uh, encourage you to share with your friends, your families, your Sunday school classes that we are here so they too can join in and be blessed by the word of God here at World Class Sunday School. What's wrong with the people today? Welcome you to World Class Sunday School. Uh, again, it's a pleasure to have you join us today. As we continue in our studies, uh, let, let us go in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time to share in your word. We pray that our hearts and minds are clear, that we uh, understand what you're saying to us through your word, that we have a desire to do those things that you are calling us to do. We love and praise and magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Amen. We are continuing in, in our spring quarter and we are studying about justice and the prophets. Very, very interesting uh, studies. Here in Unit 3, uh, we're talking about call to God's work of justice. And today uh, we're going to talk about uh, promising peace. And here uh, in the book of Zechariah, which is Zechariah is one of the 12 major prophets in the Old Testament. We're going we're gonna to examine God's promise to the remnant Jews. Uh, his promise is peace and prosperity. And when, when you read through uh, here, we, we find in the book of, of Zechariah that Zechariah was a colleague of Haggai. And uh, they worked together in forwarding the rebuilding of the temple. Like Haggai and Malachi, Zechariah's prophecy off, uh, 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 after uh, these, these prophets, uh, Haggai, Malachi and Zechariah, they prophesied after the Babylonian exile. The Jews were, were back in their homeland at this point, but they were slowful in rebuilding the temple. And Zechariah's message to them was to encourage them to complete the reconstruction. Zechariah uh, relates the visions he, he, and, and also, he related to them the instructions he received from God. Uh, more than uh, any other Old, old uh, Testament prophet, Zechariah is more future-oriented. His prophecy especially applied to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And today we, we focus on God's jealous concern, uh, his jealous concerning for the remnant of, Jew, of the Jews. And when you read through the book of, of Zechariah, you'll see that God called, you'll see God's call to repentance for his people. You'll see uh, his encouragement to trust him and his instructions in obedience. But here, here in chapter 8, where our lesson is coming from today, it's about, about their future. And God is going to promise to them peace and prosperity. And so we, we're going to look at here, we're, looking at, we're going to look at two outlines today. The first one, the first outline is stability. And uh, that's coming from Zechariah 8, chapter verses 1 through 8. And the second outline is prosperity. And that's uh, Zechariah 8, chapter verses 11 through 
through 17. We have quite a few verses that, that we're going to cover here in our lesson today. Okay, and so we're going to just jump right into it. Uh, looking here at the first outline, we're talking about stability. And here we, we're going to look at first the return to Zion. Now we're talking about we're talking about uh, Israel, uh, the Jews, God's chosen people, who have been in, in uh, the Babylonian exile for over 70 years, and now they are being allowed to come back to, to their homeland. This is the land that, that uh, God had promised Abraham that was flowing with milk and honey. And so we're going to re we see the return to Zion here in, in, in uh, verses 1 through 3. And so verse 1 starts out by saying, Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, this is, this is Zechariah, and, and this phrase, word of the Lord, is found here in this 8th chapter 18 times. And then verse, verse, the second, uh, second verse says, Thus said the Lord of hosts. Now, now, this phrase, thus said the Lord of hosts, is found here ten times. So, Zechariah wanted to make sure that the people understood that what he was saying comes directly from God. And here it, it goes on, the second part of verse 2, uh, part B says, and this is God speaking to the remnant of Israel through the prophet Zechariah. And it says, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. And, and here God, uh, the, when he used the term jealous, now it's not, here uh, God's jealousy is not, a, not envious, but, but he, here he expresses God's jealous here he implies uh, his right to protect his people and to be angry at those who had hurt them. And you know, earlier uh, in, the, in the word of God, God made a promise that those who curse Israel would be cursed and those who bless Israel would be blessed. But in a time of uh, Israel was... Uh, mistreated in any way, God was angry at whoever mistreated them. And it, it's the same way with God, God's chosen people now. Those of us who are under the blood of Christ, uh, God is jealous of us. He wants to protect us, and, and uh, uh, he, he's angry with anyone who, who mistreats us. Okay, and so here it goes, it goes on to say here in verse 3, it says, Thus saith the Lord, we see, that, we see that statement again, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Now, you know, when, when uh, the Babylonians uh, uh, had, had come in and taken... Judah into captivity. They had destroyed the city. They tore down the wall. They, they tore down the temple. And the, the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was, and we, we studied that in detail in, in some of our earlier lessons, that represented the presence of God in the midst of his people. Okay, so when, when, they, when the city had been destroyed and all that, uh, and, and now God is saying and telling Israel that he is going to again be in the midst of, of them. And God's presence signifies the, the restoration of, of his chosen people. And then it, go, it says, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Okay, now here, here we see God has, has, has uh open the door for Israel to come out of captivity back to the promised land or their homeland. And now he, he's going to change, change things around. First of all, he's going to change their name. 
uh, he said they shall be called a city of truth. And uh, when, when God changes a name, that means that reputation is going to be changed also. Now, he's talking to, to the remnant of, of uh, the Jews. And just want to make a note that, you know, both the northern kingdom, who had been uh, seized by the Assyrians, and the southern kingdom, which had been seized by the Babylon Babylonian, and the return remnant are Jews from both the northern kingdom, Israel, and the southern kingdom, Judah. And here God, uh, in this, uh, God is, is uh, promising the, the remnant that he's going to change their name. And uh, now Jude, uh, Jerusalem had, had a reputation of those, really, they didn't they keep their faith to, to God in serving him. And God is going to, going to change that. And in the New Testament, the New Jerusalem represents God's final, complete fulfillment of the prophecy that, that we are seeing here in, in the book of Zechariah. It goes on to say, uh, not only is he going to change, uh, not only shall it be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Okay? And, and we know that, that uh, in Jerusalem, the hill uh, mountain where the temple was located was called the holy mountain. And God is going to make his presence be known among his people at, at the holy mountain in Zion. Okay. Then, then, then here, when we get down, looking at this fourth verse, it talks about the restoration of Jerusalem. And remember we said, we know that the, the temple, the city, the walls, all had been been torn down and the city lie in ruin but God is going to restore Jerusalem uh, verse 4 said thus said the Lord of hosts there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets in the streets of Jerusalem and every man with his staff in his hand uh, for very aged and this really is talking about the future prosperity uh, and, and the protection that God uh, would have for his people. Uh, and then uh, the, the, those elderly won't be neglected and they, they will be taken care of. And according, according to the picture that's painted here, they're going to uh, live a long life because of the peace that God is bringing upon uh, the city of Jerusalem. And also, it says, the streets of the city shall be filled with boys and girls playing in the streets. And uh, this, this is another sign of, of the peace that Israel is going to experience. But God, God is establishing his people back in the uh, the promised land and giving them stability and, that, and that's what we're looking at okay it, it goes it says here it says uh it says thus said the lord of hosts if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of the people in these days should it also be marvelous in mine eyes said the lord of hosts and here here we see the remnant of the Jews coming back to occupy the uh, promised land or their homeland. And to, to them, this is a marvelous sight, which it is because they had, they had been under oppression for all those years. And now they are free to come back and live in peace. And, and then this verse 6 is prophesying also 
in the future how that all of God's uh, now this is just a remnant but uh, God is gonna gonna make uh, make it possible for all Jews to to come back to Him, and this is it's going to be mar this uh, what we what uh, Israel is looking at now is marvelous in their eyes, but it's going to be marvelous in the eyes of God when all His chosen people come back together, and and uh, it goes on to say, "Thus saith the Lord of hosts: Behold, I will save my people." He, he promised them that, that he's going he's gonna to save them. And I'm going to save my people from the east countries and from the west countries. And the, the gathering of God's chosen people is, is what we see here now. Now, this is a, this is a future prophecy. And then in uh, verse 8, he, he talks about, he said, I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Okay, and so, and really now, this, this is what, how it was intended to be from the beginning. God's loyalty to his people will come full circle. And, and God had been loyal to Israel down through the years, but Israel had not been loyal to God. But when they come back together... Then God will, will still be uh, true to Israel. And, and th now Israel is going to be true to God. Okay, so, so in, in the New Testament, God is including the Gentiles, those, those of us who, uh, who have been uh, uh, adopted into the family of God. We are included. Uh, in, the, in this prophecy that, that we see here. Uh, and Zechariah's uh, prophecy here finds the fulfillment, uh, the ultimate fulfillment. And, and really, it's talking about the church, and you know the church is represented by Jews and Gentiles alike. So that's what we see here. God's people, although they have been in captivity for uh, over 70 years, uh, the land has, has been desolate. Uh, the, the city, the walls, and the temple had been torn down. But we see God here bringing Israel back together, the remnant of, of, of Israel back together, and how he's, he's going to make sure that they are safe and that they have stability in, in the homeland. And the future prophecy is that all the Jews uh, and all of God's children, Jews and Gentiles alike, will, will come together. And God says, when, when that happens, he says, they're going to be my people, and I'm going to be their God. And look, in order for, for you and I to be a part of this prophecy, this future prophecy that we see here, that, 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 we, uh, that uh, Zechariah is, is pronouncing, we have to uh, know for a fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we have to believe without a shadow of a doubt that he died on the cross for our individual sin, that he paid our sin debt. And, and, and when we do that, then God assures us a place among his people here in the future. And we, we have, our future is, is decided. And we have, we, uh, we have a future uh, with, with the Lord. He's going to be our God, and we're going to be his people. Okay, so th that pretty much covers the, the first uh, out outline. We're looking at, at uh, God's uh, stability for, for the remnant. And then they, we see that they are stable. God, God wants them to be stable in their faith. He wants us to be stable in our faith. He wants them to be stable in their love. He wants us to be stable in our love. And then he wants them to be stable in their service. He wants us to be stable in our service. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at the second portion here. And we're going to look at prosperity. 
Uh, we, we like prosperity. All of us can, can uh, 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 smile when the word prosperity comes up. Here in, in this uh, second portion, we're going to look at verses 11 through 17. Starting in verse, uh, we're going to look at verses one, uh, 11 through 15, and we are seeing the reversal of fortunes. Okay. 11 starts out by saying, but now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in former days, said the Lord of hosts. Uh, now, what he's saying here, he said, I will not be unto the residue. That's the remnant he, he's referring to. I won't be to, to them as I was in former days. So, so let's go on down here and look at, at, at what he's talking about. Okay. Verse 12 tells us, for the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the harvest shall give their due, the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of his people to possess all these things. Okay, now, now we see the change of the reversal. It, now, because at first now, they were, they were cursed. Now they're going to be blessed. And not just blessed, they're going to be blessed bountifully. And here, is, when it talks about their seed, it's talking about their crop. And it, it also could indicate, uh, talk about their children. But they're going to prosper. And then, and then he goes on to say how the vine will give fruit and how the ground will give increase. God is going to make sure that they have bountiful blessings. And the promise uh, uh, of a good harvest goes hand in hand with the promise of stability. So not only is he going to make them stable, but he's also going to prosper them. And then, then we see here where, how how the stability extends into to prosperity. Okay, now in the past they were cursed, but in the future they're going to be blessed. To us now, when we put our trust in Christ, then, then we afford all the, the, all the riches that, that he has. And so, and then it goes, it says, and it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, of the house of Judah and the house of Israel. So will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Now, now see, it goes from, goes from curse, from being cursed to being blessed. So we see the reversal here of uh, the fortune of the Jews. And, and God, God's going to turn it around. And God will turn it around in our lives. When we, we've gone, go through things, we just need to make sure that, that we are part of God's family because he's going to make sure that, he, that, that we enjoy the things that, that he affords us to have. Now, and, and here we see that Israel had been cursed, but now they are blessed. Okay? And, and instead of, now see, Israel had gone off the track, but instead of drawing people to God as, as uh, it was intended to, then they were, because of their action, disobedience, they were really driving people away from God. And so the, so the question comes to us, uh, how, how, are we, uh, uh, how are we seeing in the eyes of us? Are we drawing people to God or are we, are we pushing them away? Then it goes on, he says, fear not, but let your hands be strong. And here this, this statement, your hands represents your work, your ministry. Let it be strong. Let the things you do for God uh, be, be strong. Uh, and, and it goes on to say, For thus said the Lord of hosts, As I thought to punish you when, you were, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, said the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. He, he didn't relent. He, he, did, uh, he didn't change his mind about the punishment. But he, and then it goes on to say, so again have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. 
And, and he's saying you don't have to be afraid because that uh, is over. Now I'm, I'm, I, I punish you. Now I'm going to bless you. And that's what they have for, uh, to look forward to, the blessings of God. And then, then he, uh, we look at when we see, uh, look at verse, verses 16 and 17. And, uh, it talks about now God is going to bring them back. He's going to give them peace and prosperity. But in turn, they are, he's going to renew their responsibility. Now, you know, when God blesses us, it, it just adds more responsibility uh, to us. And here he's talking about, he's going to talk about the justice and peace. Okay, it says, these are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment, or the, this is justice, of truth and peace uh, in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. Now, th now their actions are going to have to be reversed because now before the exile, they weren't, they weren't doing this. Uh, in, in fact, the Bible said every man was doing what he thought was right in his own eyes. But here we see the greatest commandment, and that is to love one another. And that's what we see here in this verse. It goes on to say, and love or no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, said the Lord. Okay, now, this is God. This is a hate list that God is, is showing Israel. Uh, now, and the things that, that God hate, then we should hate. But here he, he's talking about uh, not only should they love one another, but also he, 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 he refers to the government when he talks about the gate. Uh, no bribes, no partiality in, in government. And you know, it wasn't that way before. But God is going to uh, turn things around for Israel. He's going to bring them back. He's going to uh, stabilize them. He's going to give them peace and prosperity. And what he's asking them to do is to be obedient to his word. And he's asking the same of us to, to be obedient uh, to, to his word. When we open up our hearts to Christ and we become a part of the promise that God has given, then, then we have a responsibility to be obedient to the word of God. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for these uh, lessons that that's so plain and clear and show us the way that you would have us to go. We love you. We praise you. We magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises all, always. Well, again, friends, we thank you for joining us on today. We look forward to having you in our next session. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer.